Hey, it's Cassandra Mack here from StrategiesForEmpoweredLiving.com and CassandraMackMinistries.com. So I wanted to express my prayers and condolences and shine a light on this very evil and horrendous incident that resulted in the horrific death of a beautiful and successful young woman who had her whole life ahead of her. But it was cut short while she was on a trip in Mexico with a group of people who she believed were her friends. The woman's name is Shanquilla Robinson. This story has been weighing heavily on my heart, as well as the hearts of so many people around the world who want to see justice for Shanquilla Robinson. Many of you reached out asking me to speak on this story. So I decided to use this platform to reiterate something that I know to be true. And that's this. Some people will befriend you just to get close enough to harm you. You got to watch people. See, the thing is, no matter how long you've known someone, no matter what your relationship is to them, this could be family. Remember, the first recorded murder in the Bible was between two brothers, Cain and Abel. No matter how far back you go, I don't care if you've known each other since the sandbox and the swings and the seesaws. No matter how things appear to be on the surface, you never really know what's in a person's heart. And my grandmother used to say this about evil. Evil is as patient as a rattlesnake. Evil is as patient as a rattlesnake. It'll wait for the opportune time to strike. You know, what makes this, this story so heartbreaking, so disheartening, so beyond despicable is the fact that while she was being assaulted, she was being assaulted. The, the, the outlets keep saying a fight. I will not use the word fight. This was not a fight. It was an assault. She was assaulted. She was attacked. It was not a fight. Like after school, when you say at three o'clock, the two of us are going to fight. She didn't agree to this. This was not a fight. She was assaulted. And it was an assault that escalated, that ended in murder. And when you think about the amount of effort and rage it takes to beat a person to death with your bare hands, it is unimaginable. And... What's more disheartening is considering the fact that Shanquilla was not fighting back. If you saw the video, and it is heartbreaking and beyond devastating to watch, and I keep thinking of all those so-called friends just watching and recording. I don't know how someone can do that and not have a heart. And this is your friend, your so-called friend? Oh no, y'all ain't, y'all, y'all ain't friends. Y'all are demons doing the devil's work. Y'all are haters who were masquerading as friends. That, that's not a friend. How can you sit there, watch your friend get attacked and film it? And there was a young man who you can hear his voice saying, Shanquilla fight back and she didn't want to fight because it wasn't a fight. It was an assault. It was an attack. And none of us know how we're going to respond when we are ambushed. And this is just my thought because in the video, it looks like she's naked. And so my thinking is, did they catch her coming out of the shower and ambush her? And when you think about it more and more, and so not even that, and, and the fact that she looks naked in the video shows the level of, of, I can't even find a word despicable enough to describe these demons shows the level of larceny in their heart that they didn't just want to beat her, but they wanted to humiliate her. They wanted to humiliate her. And as a mother, I cannot even imagine what these parents are going through. And so I pray that this young woman gets justice. I pray that she gets justice and it is my hope that they all go to jail and, and, and hopefully in Mexico, some real, real jail, 
some harsh shell. And you know, here's 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 the thing. Here's the thing. I want to read you a scripture that really speaks about the danger of, of, of envy. And it comes from James 3 and 16. And it says, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. This is James 3rd chapter 16th verse. Think about that. The scriptures are letting us know wherever there's envy and strife, there's confusion and every evil work, every evil work, every evil work. So when you are around an individual or group of people who are envious towards you and who have strife, discord, malice in their heart towards you, not only are they going to bring confusion into your life, they plot in every evil work. And so sometimes when you're around somebody evil, right? When you're around somebody who's harboring the spirit of envy, you will leave thinking that you're feeling confused because their actions don't match up with who they profess to be. And so you'll, you'll be left feeling confused. But remember that God is not the author of confusion. God is the God of peace. So the fact that you are confused by their actions is all the clarity that you need to separate yourself from a group or an individual of friends like that. So if you find that you're in a situation, right, where you always feel confused, like this is supposed to be my friend, but it didn't sit well with me that they hang out with a bunch of people who they know don't like me. This is supposed to be my friend, but it doesn't sit well with me that they can never clap when I win. This is supposed to be my friend and I'm confused about why would they go and make a pass at my guy or my girl? This is supposed to be my friend. Why would they sit there and laugh at a mean joke set at my expense? This I'm confused. See, the fact that you feel confused, that's, actual, that's actually clarity. Because if you have a person who you believe is your friend that constantly leaves you in a state of be bewilderment, that's telling you that you're dealing with a person who is double-minded. And the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The Bible also says that a house divided against itself cannot stand. And so when the house of your so-called friendship is divided against loyalty, it can't stand. And so where there's evil and strife, there's confusion and every evil work. Envy is a murderous spirit. Sometimes the evil work is gossip. This is why we call gossip slander, particularly character assassination. It is a form of murdering your integrity and your character. There's conf confusion in every evil work. So when you're dealing with a person who is harboring envy towards you, they have this murderous spirit. See, this is what Solomon 8 and 6 says about jealousy and envy type jealousy. It says jealousy is as cruel as the grave. This is Solomon 8 verse 6. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Think about the analogy. There is nothing in life crueler than, crueler than death. Nothing in life crueler than the grave. Nothing. And so the fact that the Bible itself is warning us that jealousy is as cruel as the grave lets us know how dangerous it is to be around people who are jealous of us because jealousy is as cruel as the grave. And think about the grave for a moment, how cruel it is. I don't care how pretty you used to be. I don't care how handsome you were. Once you're in that grave, you're unrecognizable. Maggots coming out your eyes, skin rotting away. See, death is cruel. Now, think about there's some other cruel things, right? Fires are cruel. A fire will burn your house down, but jealousy is not compared to a cruel fire. A tornado has very cruel effects. It will destroy everything in its path. Jealousy is not even compared to a tornado. It's compared to the grave. That's how cruel envy type jealousy is. It is a murderous spirit. A murderous spirit. See, there are some people who will befriend you, pretend to like you. They got hate and resentment in their heart towards you just so they can get close enough to harm you. And I firmly believe, this is just my personal belief, that they plan to do something sinister, that they had sinister intentions 
for Shanquilla to begin with. And that's why they orchestrated that trip. Get her out the country to do something sinister. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. It's a cruel thing. So a couple of things that I want to just kind of leave you with as we keep the family in our prayers and as we pray that she gets the justice that she deserves and that those responsible for her death are prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Number one, people can be envious of anything. It's not always about material and possessions and looks. You can have someone who makes more money than you and still be jealous of you. You can have someone who's attractive and is still jealous of you because it's not always about that. Somebody can be envious of the way people love you. Your character and your level of integrity, people can be jealous of that. The classy way that you carry yourself. People can be jealous of your relationship. They want the relationship you have, the relationship with your spouse, your children, your extended family. People can be jealous of your creativity. You're just creative, your talent, your skill in a particular area. A lot of jealousy on the job because a, a, a particular individual does what they do very well and the light shines on them. So people can be, I've seen people be jealous over the way an individual prays because they pray with such power that rather than being inspired and uplifted by the prayer, they got an attitude, which is crazy. It's demonic if you ask me. Two, when you're surrounded by low vibrational people and people who are spiritually bankrupt, I know it's hard, but we got to do our best not to put ourselves in vulnerable positions. And so if I even get a little bit of envy energy from you, a little bit, I'll pull away. I will distance myself. And all I need is a little bit. I don't need a lot of energy, just a little bit. And I won't fool with you. And my guards are up very high. My heart is guarded. My physical space is guarded. My conversation is guarded. Hopefully I don't deal with you at all. But if I'm in a situation when we're in the same vicinity and it can't be helped, it could be a work situation, I'm extremely guarded around you. My heart is guarded. And I have a fence around me, meaning, you know, a, a spiritual fence. And so when you're surrounded by people who are spiritually bankrupt, because I was a spiritually bankrupt group to sit there and film an assault on another individual, even if you're not friends, even if you're not friends, just being a decent human being would not want to sit back and watch that. And encourage the individual to fight rather than pulling the one doing the assaulting off and breaking it up. Low vibrational on every level. Demonic. And so when you're around people like that, you got to do your best not to put yourself in vulnerable, vulnerable positions. I don't want to go nowhere with you. I don't want you in my house. I don't want to be in your house. I don't want to get in the car with you. I don't want to break bread with you. Nothing. If you catch a negative vibe, three, from someone who professes to be a friend, and even if you catch it for a nanosecond, do your best. Do your best not to automatically dismiss your innate senses. See, we're equipped with three ways to navigate this world. We have our instincts, which is a function of the body. And this is why we call it a gut instinct. So there are some people like when you're in the presence of someone who has envy towards you or who has ill will, even if you don't know it's envy, but you know something is off. We'll call it ill will. When you're in the presence of someone who has ill will towards you, oftentimes you'll have a visceral gut level reaction. Your body will feel tense. You ever get around some people and your body tenses up? Or you're a little sweaty. Or you feel like, you almost feel like the air is being sucked out the room. Or you feel like you get a taste in your mouth. 
It's going to be different for each person. But usually there's some sort of physical reaction when someone has a strong dislike for you. And you can pick up on it even if they're trying to hide it. Don't automatically dismiss those feelings. Pause and just be like, why do I feel this way when I'm around this person? Why do I always feel tense? What's going on here? Ask yourself that question. Ask God that question. The second thing we get is we have intuition. Intuition is a function of the soul. And so your intuition, right? Your instinct is a function of the body. Intuition is a function of the soul. Soul is the mind, the will, the emotions. And so your intuition in a nutshell is your emotional read on a person. So when we say things like, I don't vibe with her, what we're essentially saying is, I'm getting an emotional read that something is off. When we think of emotions, emotions are thought, energy, in motion. And while you cannot read a person's thoughts, you can't read their mind, you can feel energy. And emotions are thought, energy, in motion. And so as they are moving through the world, from the energy space of envy, because it's, it's energy, right? And energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transform. So if they don't transform that energy and they're in that space of envy, you can pick up on the energy. You'll get an emotional read on that person, even if you don't have the language to articulate what you innately are sensing. And when we think about how like the mind has to go through, through a process of critical thinking to explain what it is you're perceiving, that takes a while. But your instincts, your intuition, and what the third level, which is your discernment, it's very quick. And discernment happens at like the speed of light, it's so fast. And so discernment comes from the Holy Spirit. So that's the function of our spirit. And when we think about how, how nothing travels faster than the speed of light, right? And when God uses the Holy Spirit to talk to us, it is light. In that, light is truth, right? When somebody sheds a light, right? Let there be light. So light is not just the absence of darkness. Physically, light is also wisdom. Light is truth. And so when God is shining the light on somebody in your presence through the Holy Spirit, speaking through your discernment, there's a light being shined. But it travels so quickly that a lot of times what happens is that language, the language that we speak can't articulate the light that we've been shown. And it is our responsibility to just act on the light. To give an example, when you think about a street light, right? So a street light, you know that red means to stop, yellow is to get ready or pause, and green is to go. It's not very wordy. And so if we think about the Holy Spirit like that, that's the way to try to kind of conceptualize the, by the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about when the Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit for us to discern something. So I'm speaking about the discernment aspect. So when we're discerning something, one way to conceptualize uh, what we're discerning is to think of it like a stoplight. Think of it like a flashing light that is very quick. And so the logical mind has to go through the process of reasoning, deductive reasoning, critical thinking, and it has to go through a series of steps to uh, think through what you are perceiving. But the Holy Spirit is instant and immediate. And so this is why sometimes it's easy to dismiss what our spirit is shining the light on because we don't have the language to say, I feel that you're a hater. I knew that when you said this comment the other day that you were trying to get a dig. It's, it's, it's not that complicated. It's just warning you evil evil, evil, evil. Think of it like that, like a flashing light saying evil. And that's all you need to know, to know I got to come out from among this person. I got to pull back from this group. I got to cut these people off. And it's interesting, right? And very heartbreaking that when I think about rappers who are losing their lives, especially recently, the majority of them lose their lives where? In their own hometown in their own hometown around people who they grew up with, people who they feel they know. They lose their lives in either their own hometown or at the hands of someone they knew or someone who knew somebody in their circle. Familiarity breeds contempt. Ever heard that saying? 
And sometimes when a person is familiar with your success, they're, they're watching you rise, they're watching you shine, they're watching you thrive. If a person doesn't have something that they look forward to, if a person doesn't have something that gives them a sense of purpose and meaning and they're not content within their own lane, it's very easy for them to be resentful of you. And so when you pick up on that energy, I don't care if it's your own brother or sister, you have got to honor what God is showing you about people. God made people. He knows people's hearts. God made people. He know them better than we do. As much as we think we know somebody, God know them better than us. So if God is letting us know that person's not for us, we, we got to take heed to that. And so we don't know what's on a person's mind, right? We can't read their thoughts. But here's what Matthew 12, 34 says. Matthew 12, 34, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when a person's heart is abundant with resentment and envy, eventually it is going to speak from a place of resentment and envy. So it could be, uh, it could be digs, you know, fake compliments. It could be the language of silence whenever you win. See, silence is the loudest conversation. Think about when you're in a graveyard. The silence is almost deafening. You know when you are in a graveyard, you know just by the silence, you know that it's the energy of death all around you. You don't look at a graveyard and see life, even though it's not making a lot of noise. It is the silence. And so when somebody is bringing you dead like silent energy towards your progress, towards your milestones, and yet you rejoice for them, so this is a friend that you can rejoice. You're like, oh, I'm so happy that this is happening to you. I'm excited about this, 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 and that. But they never reciprocate the rejoicing. The Bible says rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. So they never rejoice when you rejoice. That's a loud conversation. It's noticeable. When people get silent and absent as you thrive, grow, and rise, that's, that's noticeable. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So they speak until you with their silence. So while you can't read somebody's mind, the heart, the mouth will speak what the heart is full of. Pay attention to that. And then here's the other piece. You can't be friends with a person who covers your life. With a person who is hating on you for having something they wish they had. Even if they try to mask their hate under the facade of a fake friendship, you cannot be friends with a person who covers your life. Now, it's one thing to be inspired by your life, but there's a difference between being inspired by your life and coveting your life. See, when they're inspired by your life, the thinking is, I'm so inspired by your ability to be resilient. I'm so inspired by your ability to go after your goals with tenacity that I'm going to go after my goals with tenacity. I'm so inspired by uh, your relationship that I'm going to open my heart up to love again. I'm so inspired by that, that, that. See, that's one thing. They're not trying to take what you have. They don't covet what you have. They're inspired by you. But when a person covets your life, they want your life. They don't want to go out and get it for themselves. They want your life. And it reminds me of that movie, Single White Female with Bridget Fonda. So Bridget Fonda is the main character. And then she takes in this roommate. I believe it's played by either Jennifer Jason Lee or Ali Sheedy. And in the movie, Bridget Fonda is the it girl. She's got it going on, doing her thing. And the roommate at first admires her and then the admiration turns into envy. And so it starts with her getting the same haircut as Bridget Fonda's character. She dyes her hair red and gets the same exact haircut. Then she's wearing her clothes. Then eventually she goes after her man. Then she wants her dead. And so it, it, it was escalating envy. See, because she wanted her life. She wasn't inspired to say, hey, I'm going to go out and do 
you know, some really cool things and find my passion and my joy, how you found your passion and your joy. That's inspiration. No, I want your man. I want your job. I want your clothes. I want your hair. I want to look exactly like you. You got to be mindful of somebody who wants to be a carbon copy of you because admiration, admiration, when it's not coming from a balanced place, can quickly turn into hateration when it's not coming from a balanced place. So it's okay to be inspired by others, but you can't be them. We're all individual souls. And so you can't be friends with a person who covers your life. And you can't be friends with a person who's in secret competition with you. It's not going to work if they're in secret competition with you. And remember, if they're in secret competition with you, it is going to come out. Matthew 12, 34, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If they're in secret competition, it'll come out through one upping you. It'll come out from the inability to rejoice when you rejoice. It will come out with little digs. It'll come out with trying to rain on your parade. It will come out. And so with that being said, don't underestimate the fact that some people will befriend you just so that they can get close enough to harm you because where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. And so what is helpful is to remember to test the spirit, to test the spirit. That is what is helpful because by testing the spirit, right? By testing every spirit, we can begin to trust what we discern. And sometimes what happens is we discern that a person is not for us or sometimes we discern that a group is not really for us. And I think about like a group I used to hang out with back in the day when I was a, 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 a teenager. And this group really wasn't my friends, you know, but I wanted to be their friends so bad. And I would notice that sometimes they would all go out and I would see the pictures later on and I was like, hey, what happened to my phone call? And I would see as you know, I would see the pictures later on. And not only that, just the way that they would interact with each other, I was the odd girl out. But I think that I just didn't want to face it at that time. And sometimes when we're young, you know, we're, we're hanging out with a group of people. We want to be accepted by a particular clique that we're not paying attention to whether or not this group of people is really for us. And one day we went out to a club and I can't even remember the name of the club, but it's a club here in New York City. And I had gotten sick and I had gotten so sick that I felt like I was going to pass out. And I asked my so-called person who I thought was my friend to come with me to the bathroom, but she had an eye on this guy and she didn't want to come. And there was another girl with our group who I didn't know that well. And she saw that I was getting sicker by the moment. And uh, not only did she go to the bathroom with me, but she made sure that I was okay. We actually ended up leaving and, she, and I didn't even know her. She was friends with one of the other girls there and she had more concern for me. I could have passed out in the club. She had more concern for me than the person who I thought was my friend. And I learned a very hard lesson on that day. And needless to say, you know, I distanced myself from, from, from that clique. But the point that I'm making is that sometimes we don't want to believe certain things and it's staring us right in the face. And when I look back, I could see, you know, there was a lot of jealousy there. And sometimes when you're hanging with a clique of a lot of women, there's all kind of competitions going on that we're not aware of, or we downplay it like it's not that serious. So here's something that's the older I get that this scripture has really served me well when it comes to vetting people. And it's 1 John 4, 1. And it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have got out into the world. Now, here's the thing about a false prophet. A false prophet is not limited to somebody making a false prophecy in a religious church pulpit setting. 
It is also somebody that's just professing something that is false. So someone can profess, girl, I got you. We going here. Dude, I got you. They could profess to be your friend, but it could be false. And so the scripture says, beloved, do not believe. So it starts out by saying, don't believe every spirit. So a person can come to you pretending they're coming to you in the spirit of we cool, in the spirit of friendship, in the spirit of wanting to befriend you. But we got to test that. We can't take them at face value. We can't take people at their word. The Bible tells you, you're not supposed to take people at their word. That's what that means. Do not believe every spirit. Test the spirit. And so bringing it back to the uh, incident when I was in the club with uh, that group of girls and I got really, really sick. That's when I found that I had vertigo. I didn't know I had vertigo until that night. And when I found out uh, I, I got really sick, that was a test. And the test was if I, <laughs> the test was I'm sick, I'm on the verge of passing out and you more concerned with getting a guy's attention and I could barely stand. See, that was a test. That was my test. And it was my responsibility to honor the test results. And the test results told me this chick isn't really for you. This click isn't really for you. And the one person who I didn't even know that well had more compassion for my condition. And we actually later became friends and she distanced herself from the same click. But we have to test the spirit. And so I would imagine although I don't know you personally, that there may have been situations in your life where there have been these little tests. Go back with these little tests and give the friend a pass or fail grade. Did they pass on loyalty? Did they pass on compassion? Did they pass on kindness? Did they pass on respecting the golden rule of friendship? We don't sleep with each other's significant other. Did they pass on not allowing people to trash talk you? Do they defend your name? Pass or fail? Pass or fail? Begin to look back at your friendships and that should help you assess your circle. Don't believe every spirit. Test the spirits. Pray on it to see whether they're from God. God, is this person for me? You'll know. So again, my heart my prayers go out to the family of Shanquilla Robinson. I pray she gets justice. Let's keep her family in prayer. Take care of yourselves and each other. And let's try to be decent people. As the world gets crazier and more chaotic, let's try to hold up a standard. Let's try to be good to people. Let's be decent. Let's be our brother's keep as best as we can. Amen. All right, I'm out.